You know, I wanted this video to be on a green screen. Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of My Mental Breakdown, where instead of recording the video that you're currently watching in front of a green screen like I wanted to, we're instead filming in front of this Scott the Waz-esque fucking set here full of all my garbage. So what's the important question for today? Why is my computer running so goddamn slow? It seemed fine, you know, when I bought the thing at Best Buy, it was running like a dream, but nowadays it's so sluggish and, and it slows down too much and, and it takes forever to download things. Well, sit down, shut up, buckle up. Uh, you don't, uh, what if we crash? Do you just not want to be safe if we crash? You need you need to wear your seatbelt. Like that like that's important. The obvious solution to this problem is just to buy new hardware, better hardware, bigger hardware. But uh you know, that's not entirely feasible for everybody out there. Like really? Are are you really going to buy a 4090 in this economy? Holy shit, I can actually make that joke and it makes sense. <laughs> Oh, and I just remembered that the 4090's power cable was melting inside of people's computers. Not the card was melting, the cable was melting. That's wild, dude. Alright, so if you want to make your computer go faster, but you can't upgrade your hardware, the only thing we can focus on right now is the software. You could overclock your system, I mean that's obviously a solution, but it can only get you so far. Let's be real here, there's a lot of reasons why your computer software is slowing down your hardware. It could be programs that installed automatically without your consent, or it could be just inefficient code. But one of the most common reasons, and the reason we're going to be focusing on today, is something called bloat. Dude, like, I'm, I'm filming here. Hold on. Oh yes. Oh yes, it is Gizmo. Gizmo, say hi. Now, bloat is kind of a catch-all term. It can take a wide variety of forms. The proper definition, let me, oh, hold on, is software that is unnecessary or unwanted by the user that negatively impacts performance. Here's an example of that. Like, let's say you go out and you buy an HP laptop and all that garbage fucking HP software is pre-installed on it and is just constantly calling back to HP servers and shipping your data off to God knows where else. That's bloatware. It's software that you did not ask for and is constantly taking CPU cycles to do God knows what. Now I just threw some terminology at you. A CPU cycle. What is it? In the most basic terminology possible, a cycle on a CPU is just a single set of instructions. So you know how with every CPU nowadays, their, their power, their, their speed is measured in gigahertz? A single hertz, or hertz, whatever, is the same thing as a cycle. It's the time a CPU takes to do a single set of instructions. Okay, so I just did the math. A single gigahertz is, uh, how, fuck, how many zeros is that? A single gigahertz is effectively a billion simple instructions that your CPU is doing every second. If you really want to break it down, all a CPU is doing, remember CPU is central processing unit. All this one little piece is doing is doing a billion little math problems every second. And that's only one gigahertz. Nowadays you're seeing processors being sold with five gigahertz. Every second, dude? Fuck! So obviously, having this much power in your system, developers can get a little bit lazy with making their code efficient. No, okay, that's not fair. It's not lazy, they just have a whole lot more headroom to work with. So why would you worry about making your code as efficient as possible if the people you're trying to sell it to, they can just run it even if you don't make it efficient? That, it makes sense. So what is the point of all this? Well, you want to make sure that on your processor or your GPU or whatever, you want to make sure that those things are using every single cycle possible to do the things that you want it to do. So you don't want your processor to constantly be calling Microsoft all the time, shipping your data off to God knows where, when all you want to do is just play some fucking video games. And I'll be honest, one of the biggest perpetrators of this bloatware fiasco that we've been having is Microsoft. So you know how when you install Windows, uh, Microsoft Edge pops up and is like, Hey buddy, you want to use this web browser? We promise it's really good this time. It's not like Internet Explorer. We promise Edge is good. Please use it. It's fucking pathetic if I'm being honest. Did you know 
that Microsoft Edge, even if you use a different web browser, even if you use Chrome or Firefox or Vivaldi, whatever, because you can't uninstall Edge and you can't delete it, it's going to constantly be reaching into your other browsers and pulling your personal data out and shipping it off to, I don't know, Bill Gates' wet asshole. I don't fucking know. I know Bill Gates is not at Microsoft anymore. It's, a, it's, a, it's an analogy. So not only do you have a worthless web browser that's just sitting on your hard drive, taking up space, it's also taking up resources on your computer to effectively spy on you. All I'm gonna say is, there's a reason Windows is free now. Okay, so what's the solution to this? Is there some magical way that this random YouTuber is gonna tell me to unbloat my system? Is there some program he's going to give me that's going to just make my Windows system run better? No, and also don't download software from random YouTubers. That's not good. <laughs> that is actually worse than just having Edge on your computer. The problem with all of this is that there really isn't a good solution. At least not without dedication. I'm sure there are ways that you could uninstall Edge or uninstall 3D Paint, because who the fuck uses 3D Paint? And all the other piece of shit bloat programs that Microsoft includes on their dog shit operating system. But it's not simple. And I'm sure Microsoft does this on purpose. I can't exactly tell you how to fix your Windows install. All I can do is say what I did. I switched to Linux. Now hold on. I understand that not everybody is okay with Linux, and I understand that you probably don't want to switch over to an entirely different operating system to fix your problems. Cause like, I get it, we're all lazy, you know? The point I'm trying to make is that I could not find a proper solution to the terrible user experience you get on Windows. So I just changed what system I was using. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just switch to Mac? That's probably just as good as Linux. I mean, yeah, you could do that. I'm not going to stop you. If you like Mac, then go right ahead, man. Do, do you do you. But I didn't do that. I spent the time, about a year and some change, and learned how to run my system on Linux. I learned how to record videos. I learned how to edit. I learned how to stream. I learned how to game and do all that stuff on Linux. And guess what? I found the user experience that I was looking for. But again, that's just me. I don't know what you want. But I get it, you don't want to use Linux. So is there a solution out there for you, the Windows user? No? Mac OS and Windows are what is known as closed source operating systems. Meaning that you can't find out how things work and you can't make your own versions of it. Like if someone tried to go online right now and ship their own version of Windows with all of the bloatware stripped away and all of the spyware and telemetry stripped away and turned off, they'd probably get sued or face jail time. And the worst part is that Microsoft is totally within their legal right to do that. They don't want people messing with their precious operating system. They don't want people making it their own or fixing it or turning off the fucking spyware. And that's just kind of how it is and there's really nothing we can do about it. So like, it sucks, but this video isn't about finding a solution to the problem, just about explaining the problem, why it happens, and just letting you be more aware of it. And honestly, for me, that's good enough. I'm not a programmer. I don't know how to make things work, even on Linux. I don't know how to fucking program things. I wrote one script. That doesn't make me a master programmer. To me, the more people that are aware of these problems and the shortcomings of Windows and Mac and the shortcomings of Linux is always a good thing. My advice would be to try to investigate yourself. Maybe go into your task manager and see what things are taking up cycles here and there. Maybe Edge is stealing some cycles from your computer. Maybe you can shut it off. Maybe you can't. I don't fucking know. I haven't used Windows in like a year. Do you play Valorant? Well, guess what? You've basically just installed a backdoor into your system. And that's due entirely to Riot's bullshit Vanguard anti-cheat. It's basically what's known as a rootkit. Look up what a rootkit is. Trust me, you're gonna be terrified of that game after that. There's so many companies out there who are just trying desperately to steal your hardware from you and steal your data and steal everything off of your computer that you owned, or at least you should own. So yeah, we should be more aware of these things. We shouldn't just be blissfully ignorant and allow all these people to just spy on us all the time. That's not okay. And maybe if enough of us are aware, maybe we can finally make a difference. 
Maybe. 